You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Well, hello, I'm Stacy Campbell with K-State Research and Extension of Ellis County, and I've got a guest here with me today, J.P. Michaud, who is an Extension Entomologist for K-State Research and Extension. And we're out here at the Experiment Station in Hayes in the greenhouse, and we've got some different Milo plants uh, that kind of have some issues going on, and so we thought this would be a good backdrop. Uh, some of these plants are infested with, uh, with, the different little, with different insects and mites and aphids. Which brings me to what we want to talk about today, JP, and that's a new pest of grain sorghum called the sugarcane aphid. Um, they're experiencing problems, or they have been experiencing problems with them down south in, in Texas and Louisiana, and now Oklahoma, and we even saw a little bit of it get into, the, into Kansas late last year in a couple of counties, and it's uh, the sugarcane aphid. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Well, this is a new aphid problem in sorghum, at least in the United States. So really uh, expanded its range substantially um, last year. It was found in Beaumont, Texas in 2013, and it did some damage down there. The damage was much wider spread last year, and so we're, we're expecting that we are going to have problems with this aphid in the Kansas grain sorghum this year. Okay. So this is something that everybody needs to be on the lookout for if you're planting sorghum. And forage sorghum can also be affected. Yes, yes, yes. And I mean, obviously we don't know what the extent of the damage, we don't know the extent of, of uh, how many of them are gonna be up here, how much damage could be done, but obviously you're, you're gonna talk about this, uh, they reproduce about eight or 10 fold more than what our other aphids do, and they feed uh, further throughout the, the growth cycle of the plant. So why don't you discuss that a little bit? Well, this is an aphid that you will recognize by being very pale yellow. In fact, the nymphs are almost white. So it's gonna be a lot paler than, than the other aphids we're used to seeing on, on, on sorghum. Okay. And what you're looking for, are the aphids have two little sort of tailpipes on the okay. back of their abdomen, and those are black in this aphid. So the short black tailpipes on a very pale yellow aphid, okay? Okay. They, they do reproduce significantly faster than the green bug. I okay. mean, up to twice as fast. And, um, but the damage they do is not quite as severe. So you will get some reddening of the leaves. We have some green bug damage over there, which is characteristic, very reddened leaves. It's this chlorosis. So the feeding of the sugar cane aphid is, uh, will cause similar damage, but it takes more aphids feeding for a longer period. The problem is that these, these aphids can infest the plant at almost any stage of growth. Okay. So whereby we usually have green bugs only coming in around late whorl stage and then feeding up until flowering. In the case of the sugarcane aphid, they can infest earlier, but the real problem comes where they feed a lot later. So you might think entering grain fill, you don't need to worry about aphids anymore. But with sugarcane aphid, you have feeding right up until grain fill in the panicles. Okay. And so you have impact not only on the quantity of that grain, but also the quality, the test weight, the protein content, okay. and things like that. Okay. So um, yeah, very important to, to we, we have thresholds established, an average of uh, 50 aphids per leaf. You're supposed to look at a leaf near the top of the plant and one a lower, but still green leaf low on the plant. Okay. And look at 10 plants like that, and at five different places in the field, if you're averaging 50 aphids or more per leaf, that's not a lot of aphids, then really that's considered the, the threshold to spray. And we do have a section 18 for, for uh, special permission to use, uh, emergency use for two insecticides that are very effective okay. against it. And the trade names I'll give you instead of the scientific names because that will be more accessible. Sivanto and Transform. Okay. So we have a, that's a, a Bayer product and a Dow product. Okay. And I, and I believe that the Transform would probably be, kind of be the first product uh, that you guys would recommend because it's not quite as hard on the beneficials. The work that we're doing and have done so far suggests that Transform is quite a remarkable material in that it is very easy uh, if it has low toxicity to at least the lady beetles, we're looking at some of the other insects as well. 
Uh, but yes, much lower toxicity for some reason. Um, and th this is very, uh, very uh, desirable because we are hoping eventually, of course, that they're beneficial insects. For us, that'll be mostly lady beetles. And the green lacewings, they're very active in the sorghum and, and some other predators of aphids, will eventually uh, respond uh, in, a, in a very uh, timely manner and in sufficient numbers to give us natural biological control of this pest, which is what they do for us uh, with green bug, but it may take a few years. So typically in these situations where we have a new invasive aphid, you have some very large populations that have to be sprayed to protect yield in those first few years. Okay. But if we can limit that spraying to only threshold conditions and perhaps also leave less productive areas of the field or areas which are unaffected by the aphid unsprayed, this will assist that evolution of natural biological control. So okay. eventually we won't need to spray anymore. Okay, yes. And then, not to, to say that the sky is falling, but down in Texas, I guess, where they've really had uh, individual fields get quite a few of those aphids, what, the, the yield reduction, I think, has been 50% plus the honeydew that they excrete out has even caused hot harvest problems, is that right? Uh, that's correct. Another characteristic of this aphid is very copious secretions of honeydew. They produce lots of honeydew. And of course, on honeydew, you get mold, sooty mold will grow. This can interfere with some photosynthesis of, of the plant because oh, yeah. it coats the leaf. Yeah. But more important, in the heads, you get fouling of the heads with both the honeydew and the mold. Okay. And they can be so sticky, uh, at, uh, you know, it creates physical problems with harvesting okay. the grain. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. And then is there, is there anything else in, in closing you'd like to, to mention about the sugarcane aphid? Um, well, two things. We're going to be planning out we, uh, some ver varieties, some commercial popular Kansas grain sorghum varieties, and a couple of parental lines which appear to have good resistance, both to green bug and to sugarcane aphid, and uh, so see how they do. So we, we do have some plant resistance traits in the pipe that okay. will be good. Probably in Kansas variety, commercial varieties uh, very soon. And the other thing I will say to end is just very current conditions, if you will. We're finding um, sugarcane aphid right now overwintering just south of Dallas, Texas. So look at a line in, a, say, about 32 degrees latitude, also in Arkansas. At that, L, uh, at that latitude, we're finding overwintering um, sugarcane aphid on Johnson grass, which of course is quite a common weed to the south of us, quite a common weedy grass species. So these, um, th these are potentially, uh, or they're the migrants that are going to be, when they form wings, will move north on the winds and, and infest further north. Okay, okay. And, and I mean, technically, we don't think that this aphid can overwinter here in Kansas. Is that, is that correct? Well, that's correct. But we're not for sure. Even the, even the green bug doesn't overwinter very well in Kansas. And it can produce eggs, which are the overwintering stage of, of okay. aphids. However, sugarcane aphid doesn't have a sexual generation that we know of. So uh -huh. we'll not be able to produce eggs that overwinter. So this is one of the big questions right now is how far north can it survive? And right now the answer to that seems to be about just south of Dallas, Texas. Okay, okay. Well, JP, we appreciate you taking the time out to visit with us today about the sugarcane aphid. So that is a new pest to grain sorghum and forage sorghum that uh, growers here in Kansas are gonna be, uh, need to be on the lookout for uh, this summer. And if you need some assistance, have further questions, feel free to contact your, your local K-State Research and Extension Office or JP out here at the Experiment Station. And uh, we'll do the best we can to try to answer those questions and help you. Uh, once again, this has been Stacy Campbell with K-State Research and Extension and JP Michaud uh, with Eagle Community Television. You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Spring is here and that means it's time to come out and visit Carico Implement in Hayes, Kansas for all your lawn care needs. We stock and sell the full line of John Deere riding lawn equipment along with Honda walk-behind mowers and generators. We also offer the full lineup of steel power products. If your project requires even more muscle, check out our full lineup of John Deere compact tractors and skid loaders. And don't forget, we have the parts and services to keep you up and running all spring long. So whatever your spring lawn care and maintenance needs are, come on out to Carico Implement for a solution that fits.